The PS4 Pro costs $400. Now it's got his better graphics. It doesn't even have the damn 4K Blu-ray player. If I wanted to spend $400 every three years for better graphics and non-cinematic frame rate, I've got a PC. This shit. Well, you know what I say? Amen, brother. We heard all the outraged console gamers out there and got on the phone with Dbrand to devise a plan. So if you don't want to buy a PS4 Pro, why not just water cool your PS4 and make it look dope AF while you're at it? So let's get down to it then. Welcome to PlayStation 4 Water Cooling. So this journey began over six months ago when my son and I sat down and tore down the PS4 looking for the best way to tackle this problem. Then I got busy with other projects and handed it off to Jake who promptly did what any sane person would do and taped a thermal probe using a non-conductive thermal paste to the back of the main board and reassembled it. He chose this position because placing the thermal probe on the APU directly would have affected the contact between the heatsink and the APU itself. And the purpose of this disassembly, reassembly rigmarole, in total it was completely torn down and put back together twice, and we'll need to do it one more time to get our thermal probe out at some point, sorry Jake, was to get baseline temperature so we could determine how well our DIY water cooling solution worked. So I don't expect too many people to replicate this project, and if they do, I'd imagine they have some idea how to go to ifixit.com and find a PS4 teardown to follow along with. But since we've got all the footage of taking it apart, I'll leave it to my editors to give you guys the highlights until we reach the good stuff. Ah, here we go. With the motherboard removed, we get our first good look at the thermal compound on the AMD APU that functions as both the CPU and GPU core for the PlayStation 4. So we replaced this with a pea-sized amount of IC Diamond for both our before and our after tests. Let's fast forward again for a little bit here. Really? That tiny heatsink does all of the cooling for the PlayStation 4? So that then is what we'll be replacing with an EK Supremacy GPU block. By the way, shout out to EK for providing our liquid cooling gear. By drilling through the rivets here with a couple of different size bits. Next, we needed to cut away the motherboard tray with some aviation shears. We actually ended up needing straight, right, and left angle for this, but I guess you could just use a Dremel. Then we routed zip ties through the block, through the motherboard, and through the tray proceeding to cut a hole into the side of the PlayStation 4 for our tubing to route through. Please note that we don't generally recommend attaching fittings to tubing, then screwing the whole thing into a block. It is very easy to accidentally cause it to come loose and leak when the tubing moves, but we didn't have many options here and it was the best way forward. With the tubes installed, it was time to reassemble the PS4, but we needed to make sure our block was securely mounted first. Hmm. That single zap strap didn't really seem to cut it. But with four or five pieces of squishy, double-sided tape, we were able to compress the stacks, slide them in, and let them expand, giving us a surprisingly good mounting solution that not only held the block in place, but also supplies adequate pressure between the block and the APU. So far, so good. Fast forward again to... Are they really gonna do that? Yes, my friends. During reassembly, we swapped out the stock 500 gig hard drive for a 3.84 terabyte Samsung PM863 SSD, making this the highest internal capacity and possibly the most expensive PlayStation 4 ever at about $3,000 all told. Now by this point, some of you have probably realized that we didn't manage to mount a radiator, pump, or reservoir inside the PS4's chassis. It's possible that this could be done, but given how cramped the PS4 already is with its smaller size, similar power to the Xbox One, and internal power supply, it wouldn't be easy. No problem though, proto case to the rescue. 
So the first step was to do up an initial design in SketchUp, which we sent to Protocase to mechanically design and to manufacture. Those guys are great at what they do. The footage you're looking at now is from their amazing metal shop that they use for rapid prototyping and even some larger scale manufacturing. There was a small design oversight on our part that forced us to run the radiator in pull rather than push, but other than that, it worked great. We loaded up an EK X-Res 140 with a pre-attached D5 pump using a custom mount from our 3D printer, a Coolstream SE 120mm slim radiator, a bunch of EK fittings, some Primo Chill black tubing, and a Scythe slim 120mm fan. Then at this point, we sent the mostly finished system to Dbrand for one of their sexy vinyl skin jobs. Those guys mostly do phones, game consoles and accessories and computers, but they're always up for a challenge and I think they did an amazing job of the external water cooling box. Let them know over on Twitter if you agree. We'll have that linked below and be sure to check out their configurator, which we'll have linked in the video description next time you need to personalize and protect a device, whether it's an iPhone, or a monstrosity such as this one. Anyway, surprisingly, with it all put together, no leaks, which leads us to moment of truth time. Will the PlayStation 4 boot and success? It still turns on, but did we improve our temperatures? The answer again is yes. Unfortunately, for those of you who legitimately thought water cooling might help you avoid a PS4 Pro upgrade, this won't do anything for performance at all, but a 16 degree improvement in temps while staying near silent is still a pretty fantastic achievement. At least we think so. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, I guess you could do that thing. But if you liked it, hit that like button, get subscribed, maybe even consider checking out our links in the video description where you can learn more about dbrand. You could buy a PlayStation on Amazon. We'll have that down there as well or whatever the case may be. Also linked in the description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So click that little button in the top right corner to check out our latest video over on Channel Super Fun. <laughs>